absolutely blessing. Can you hear us on tonight? Yes, we can. Awesome and amazing. Now, for some reason, it's saying that uh, the host has stopped our video. <laughs> so we're unable to turn on our video. So I'm not really Why? sure. I'm not really there sure. There it is. Oh, there we go. It's there we on. go. All right. Awesome and amazing. Well, first and foremost, we want to say thank you to you for that phenomenal introduction and to all of Africa. We are so excited to be before each and every one of you as so many great things are happening in your country. And Nate and I are just honored first and foremost. So we wanna give you all a huge shout out to you, Blessing, for giving us this opportunity. Nao, Nick, Yolande, Yolande, all of the partners council over there, all of the leaders over there, Congratulations to all of you and just thank you because it is truly a blessing to be here on this evening. It is absolutely. Thank you guys for having us. Um, hopefully something that we say can uh, inspire somebody to move to a different level. Um, we're gonna do our best to give you guys how we actually moved through this, not to say that it is the only way, um, but more importantly, we are first and foremost studiers of the industry of direct sales and network marketing. And we wanna share with you guys some of the things that we actually learned um, in our ascension in this industry. Uh, some of the things that we possibly, that we went through, uh, how we not just went through things, but how we grew uh, through things, which we believe is one of the most important aspects of what this industry is. Um, this industry levels the playing field for everybody. And what we wanna be able to do is show you how to simply take advantage of what this industry has to offer. And right. we are, we are we're, we're so, we're big studiers of the industry so much to an extent to where it's primarily all we really teach, right? Because there, there are companies all over the place. We love PartnerCo. PartnerCo is by far the best company that we have ever been a part of. And trust me, we've been a part of a lot of companies. Absolutely. We've studied a lot of products, a lot of compensation plans. And I love the industry so much, guys. I wrote a book about the industry. So I'm very passionate about it. Um, Pam is very passionate about everything as well. And she wants to share a little bit about our story because she tells the story. Absolutely. The and, and you know what? First and foremost, before we even get into our story, I just really want to let all of Africa know how passionate Nate and I are about Africa as a whole and just really believing in every single thing that you all are doing. You see, Nate and I, we've been blessed to visit South Africa, not just once, but three times. And we are so excited about, about Celebration Day coming as we unite again and really take things to the next level in Africa. So I first and foremost just want to say that. And that is the reason why we are so thankful for each and every one of you because teamwork is what makes the dream work. And you are the ones that are there on the ground every single day getting it done. But, you know, just as Nate said, you know, one of the things that if, if you don't get anything from me tonight, other than to know without a shadow of a doubt that it is truly all about belief. It's all about making a decision to believe in yourself and to understand that all things are possible to those that believe. Because Nate and I do have a story in this industry in which we are that couple in which we did everything wrong. We failed in this industry for literally over 20 years. Right. And a lot of times people look at our story as we got started in an opportunity and we were able to create a million dollars in 17 months. And we say to everyone, no, it took us 20 years and 17 months in order to become the person that God needed us to become in order to be in the position to where we could lead his people. Because I truly believe that this opportunity, this industry, is something in which it's not about us, but it's about how many lives can we impact? How many lives can we change along the way? And so Nate and I, we were in a season, a season in life. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but we were broke and we had lost everything. And I can tell you that as corporate America failed Nate, he was an engineer for over 25 years. He built teams all over the world. And in this season, I was a stay at home mom because I was tired of sitting in traffic and not having time with our family. And so we had made this decision, but it was a struggle, but we always believed and knew that the industry of direct sales was the only thing that could offer us the opportunity to create that type of freedom. And so as the job failed us, 
and there was an opportunity looking in our face, I had to decide because I want all of you on here tonight to know that you are possible because I was a woman who was afraid. I was a woman who couldn't stand in front of a, 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 a computer like this and talk to you. I was a woman who couldn't stand on a stage without shaking like a leaf. But then one day I realized as I looked on the inside of me that everything that I need needed, I already had. And that is where I began to realize that I am created for greatness. And so as we began to move forward in this industry, all of the principles that I had learned, that Nate and I had learned, we began to practice because you cannot participate in the promise unless you are willing to, to practice the principles. And these principles have to be an everyday mentality. And so you got to number one, believe in yourself. As you believe in yourself, how are you going to do this? You have to work on yourself every day. There's not a day that Nate do not Nate and I do not spend time on growing ourselves personally because this is how we've been able to become the people that we are today. The second thing that you have to do is you have to believe in the process because many times we don't understand the process, but you have to go through the pain. You have to go through the process in order to get to the victory. And so as we began to go through the process and to practice the principles and to understand that every opportunity is an opportunity for growth, that is when the success began to happen. Then the third thing is you got to believe in the product. You got to believe in the opportunity. You got to believe that the very thing that you have in your hands is an opportunity of a lifetime. So I learned a long time ago that in order to believe in these things, you got to consume the noni. You have to literally be so in tune with your products. I used to always say that if you cut me, I bleed this because it was so it was so inside of me. It has to go from your head to your heart. When this opportunity, this company, Partner Co. goes from your head to your heart, that is when the success will begin to happen. And then as you're believing in this thing, you're leading by example day in and day out. And so now your team begins to grow. You start to attract people because as you become, you now attract, right? And so you start to attract people and now you begin to believe in your team and to know that as you are leading by example, your team will grow. You can see the numbers. You have to visualize your success and see it before it even happens. You have to literally wake up every single day and walk through that moment. You have to wake up every single day and see your celebration day. You have to wake up every single day and see yourself walking across the stage. You have to wake up every single day and see your team there celebrating with you as you celebrate them, right? And then the last thing, that I would say is you have to believe in your dream. You see, so many people end up quitting on themselves. They quit on their dream because they don't believe in it. And I can tell you, as we sat back broke, as we sat back in a position, we ended up homeless, literally, as we started that last opportunity. And I can tell you that the world didn't know that Nate and I didn't have a place to live. It wasn't time. But one thing that I learned is that your mess will become your message if you keep going. Your test will become your testimony if you keep going. And the only way that it will happen is that if you make a decision to not allow anything to kill your dream, you gotta believe. And so God has truly blessed us in this industry. And it's not because we focused on ourselves. We focus on other people. Because whereas Nate and I have been able to earn almost six million, probably over six million dollars in this industry in the last 10 years, it's not about our story, but it's about the people, the individuals who paid off cars who created five-figure, multiple six-figure incomes, who were able to take care of their parents, who were able to do things, to put their kids in those private schools, to be able to take vacations that they could, they could never do, to not have to say no when they wanted to say yes. And so when you focus on others, you in turn will reap the very things that you wanna re reap. And so you gotta believe Africa, because now is the time. And belief is such a powerful message, man. You know, when we talk about belief, we really think about, okay, what do we really believe in? Why do we believe in it? 
how long are right. we going to believe in it? How passionately right. are we going to believe in it? Now, there are two choices that you have. Typically, a person believes in something because uh, they need something, right? Or they believe in it because they feel they may need it. Pam and I didn't have the luxury of feeling we may need it. Um, we were so far behind the power curve that we had no other choice. Right. Um, uh, Pam always says that our back wasn't against the wall. It was through the wall. Right. Right. So it was it, for us, it was really do or die. And one of the things that we teach is to create that perpetual uh, uh, necessity for change and a perpetual necessity for need, right? That hunger that you have to have to create that comfort zone, to create that uncomfortable zone. So be uncomfortable in the, in the be comfortable in the uncomfortable, right? right? So, so if you guys will write down three words for me, because three of these words are, these are the three things that we look for in this industry, right? We look for community, we look for culture, and we look for a collective. Right. Mm. So so those three things as human beings, we look for innately, but in this industry, even more so because it is the great leveler of playing fields, we can come here and do some things that we ordinarily can't do right other places. Right. So we know that the human mind is like wonderfully complicated. Right. It really is. Right. We have so much potential as human beings. We are the only species of people that are free to chart our own path. Right. That's we true. can become whatever we want to become, but all of that is defined by the decisions that we make. And see, Pam and I learned this, and it took us 20 years to learn this, it did. right? So that's why we vowed to help other people learn these simple strategies. And we always say it's not about bar graphs. It's not about pie charts. It's not about knowing the exact thing to say, being programmed to say this when somebody says that. It's about connection. It's about connecting with people on a heart level, right? So when you look at making the right decisions, everybody wants to make the right decisions because we're defined by those decisions, whether we like it or not, good or bad. And typically, sometimes we don't know that we made a bad decision until we look in the mirror called hindsight right that's true. <laughs> right so so at that point it's a little it's a little late <laughs> right. these are the things that pam and i figured out a little late in the game if we would have figured this small part out our network marketing career would have been a whole lot smoother we'd be on the beaches of the we'd world be on right the now beaches of the world <laughs> right now talking to you guys from you know from the beach and we've lived the life yes guys that you know we've been able to do whatever it is that we want to do fly when we want to fly go where we want to go um and we're not telling you this stuff to impress you but to impress upon you how powerful this industry is if you think of it the right way if you change the way you think of things, the things you think about change, right? right? So guys, we're uniquely created with purpose and we have that deep longing for the three C's that I just talked about, community, culture, and collective. The collective is individuals that want the same thing. We all want the same thing, right? But where do we find it? Network marketing is what we discovered. Network marketing was not designed to coerce people into something that they may not want to do. Right. It was designed to foster the three C's that I just spoke of, culture, community, and the collective. The South Africa, yeah, you have a collective of individuals, but you have to determine who's hungry and who's not. Because Pam and I spent our wheels for a long time not understanding how to discern the people that were just standing in the back of the bus, as opposed to the people that were fighting their way to the front of the bus. That's so good. we focused on everybody at the same time, but, but guys, don't let anybody tell you that, that you have to, everybody has to be handled with kid gloves and every, everybody, everybody does deserve a chance, but I got to tell you, if you want what you that, what you said, you're promising this industry, what you promised yourself, you would have, you're going to have to adopt a shark mentality. You can call it what you want, a lion mentality, a shark mentality, an eagle mentality, right? But it all feeds into the fact that freedom is just not free. Mm -hmm. so, so when we understand the process and we understand that your success is determined by who you become and not who you are at this very moment, it's determined by who you become and not who you are at this very moment. 
Your changeability, your ability to change creates a transformation. Now, Pam has, uh, Pam has a tattoo on her back. I'm going to show you Pam's tattoo. She has a butterfly on her back, right? Um, when Pam was, was talking about her, what she, what she said about her not being able to stand in front of people and being shy and things of that nature, um, you know, I told Pam, I said, you know, I'm getting a tattoo. Pam said, well, I'm going to get one too. And she said, I want a butterfly. I said, why do you want a butterfly? She said, because I want to transform. I just don't want to change. Right. Transforming and changing are two different things. Okay. Your changeability index, you can rate yourself from one to 10 in a moment here, right? Your changeability index determines your ability to actually transform. When a, when a butterfly goes into the cocoon, it doesn't change. Right. It transforms. So that means it ingests every part of the worm that it was. So it doesn't come out looking like the worm. It's a very grueling process. You don't believe me? Look up transformation process of a butterfly. You're going to see that it eats its, le its legs and, it, and everything else to create the beautiful wings that you see. So we don't change here in this industry. Oh, we change out there. In corporate America, we change every day. We put on different faces, but you don't transform. Right. This industry affords you the opportunity, not the ability. That's on you. The opportunity to actually transform, right? So your changeability creates the transformation that you need. Now your changeability index has to be something that you're truthful with yourself about. You can lie to others, but if you lie to yourself and then believe it, it's the kiss of death. You will spin your wheels in this industry for 20 plus years, like Pam and I did, if not more. Right. Right. <laughs> right? So rate yourself truthfully. Nobody sees your number. If you're a solid two, own that thing. If you're a 10, walk in it proudly, but don't fool yourself because the best part and the worst part of this industry are the same thing, people. People are the best part of this industry, but they can also be the worst part. That's true. People can be the sunshine in your organization or they can be the cancer in your organization. And you have to know how to safeguard against that. Mm -hmm. So there are three levels of success that we really have to go through. And this is the cherry on top of the cake for Pam and I. When we realized it, um, we became super coachable. We didn't realize this until we came, became <laughs> coachable, right? Because we thought we had the answers, right? right? We were like, well, I was, I was this big time engineer uh, in corporate America. I was leading teams of engineers around the world. We were putting in complex net, networks that, that power and the algorithms for your phones that you use right now, right? My team was doing all of this. So when I got to network marketing, I thought that I could apply these very same principles here. And I was wrong. I had to be more people connected. I had to show my heart more in this industry. I had to maybe shed a couple of tears and allow people to see who I really am. But more importantly, I realized that I could be myself here and I could grow from what I am mm -hmm. to what I wanted to become. So now these three levels of success, right? These are separation points that you really need to grab onto if you want success in this industry. The first is the takeoff. Picture a rocket ship, mm. right? A rocket ship takes off with a large amount of fuel. It needs that fuel to do what? To, to get off the platform and to break gravity, right? It needs that to get out off the platform and to break. I think we got somebody unmuted. I think. Yeah, I think somebody. Yes, okay. So, so it needs that large amount of fuel and those massive rockets to actually break that, the, the, the gravity and to get off of that platform. So guys, that's synonymous to people always telling us that the start is the hardest part. It really isn't. The start isn't the hardest part. Guys, we've got a, we've got a, a, a business in a box done for us. We don't have to ship products from our homes. We, we don't have to even do all of the marketing for ourselves. So that's even, some of that's even done for us. Right. So what we have to do is we have to get out there and rub shoulders with people, right? We have to love on people. <laughs> More importantly, we have to identify people 
and what their intentions are. We have to ask the hard questions because out there, they've never been asked these questions before. The middle. The middle is the hard That's part. The, hard part. the middle, it's quit. the separation part. It's what are you separating from? When that rocket ship gets up, it has to drop the fuel cells so that it can, so they can get that last little bit out of the atmosphere into orbit. And the only way they do that is to separate that, to drop that. In network marketing, we have to separate ourselves from anything, people, places, and things that are holding us into this gravity that used to be who we are, or that is who we are currently. It's going to keep us from getting into orbit, which is the third degree of separation, getting into orbit. And once you get into orbit and you've dropped all of the baggage that you have, you've laid aside all of the ego, you've said, I want to be coachable, I want to know what it is that governs the success, I want to learn these principles, learn them and practice them, I don't want to procrastinate, I don't want to be hypocritical, I am an open book, I want to be written on, tell me what I need to do. That's what we did, right? We let ourselves, we, we completely opened up and we allowed ourselves to be coached. And I've always said, not everyone needs a mentor, but everybody needs a coach, okay? You can have a mentor from afar, but if you don't have a person that, that is telling you the truth of who you are at this very moment, that knows you, that knows your goals, that knows what you're trying to accomplish, then you're kidding yourself. You're not going to get there as fast as you need to get there. The freedom comes about when we get into orbit. Mm -hmm. When you get into orbit, you are free to make those course corrections. You're free to, to go full speed ahead in your, in your course. Those little course changes you can make, that's fine. But in, once you get in orbit, that means that now you've learned enough, you've been coached enough in this industry to start to duplicate who you are. You can't duplicate the bad parts of you. And I think that's where a lot of people miss it because they take so long to become coachable. Duplicate the good things that are happening to you, your coachability, duplicate your transformation, and even duplicate the process that you take to get mm -hmm. to your transformation. And this is the last thing I say, Pam and I always tell people, if you really wanna know who a person is, you wanna know their real stories, not about the glory. Don't focus on the glory, focus on the story. Mm -hmm. Scroll process. back in their social media, scroll back, sit down and ask them, what, where were they 10 years ago and what were they doing? How did they progress through? What was their process? Scroll back and see where they started. You're gonna see a completely different person. Now, what you see now is the end point. What you're looking at from the beginning is that start point that middle point is what we all need to focus on. And that's how Pam and I have been able to um, amass millions in this industry because we understand all of these different principles because the cliches that we all use that we know and love so much, we have a very, very long list of them. We all use them, <laughs> it makes work. us all sound smart, right? But the reality is those are no longer cliches, they never have been. The light came on off for us came on for us when we realized that those were not cliches. They were the principles that governed this success in this industry. Yes, absolutely. It really is. It really is all about that coachability index and the process, because I can truly say that once I got that, because it was just like Nate said, we were in so many different opportunities along the way and um, many of them you know while, while Nate was working in corporate America I can remember myself sitting behind the desk and just wanting to win in this industry right. but really not being real with myself and understanding that it wasn't until I was to make a decision to get out of outside of that comfort zone that box that I had myself in and to stop you know allowing myself to have these negative thoughts and negative energies around me and i began to create the environment that's the reason why you can look behind us so you can see all of these affirmations i began to create the environment that now caused me to thrive so the very things that i couldn't do i began to speak that life into myself so that now i could become coachable so i began to instead of allowing myself to be afraid i began to speak things like i am bold I am a winner. I am a champion. I am created for greatness. I can. I am wise. I have a team that's growing all over the world. And so I started to speak these affirmations into myself every single day. 
And as I began to create the environment that now helped me to realize that I am enough, that I can do right. this. Right. Now I can tell you all of those cliches that I used to listen to that I played games with in which we wanted to win, but we weren't getting any gravity. We weren't gaining any gravity. We weren't having any success. I began to do. And so it was the activity, the day in activity, the things that that you're doing behind the scenes. What are you doing behind the scenes? How big is that? Why? You see, when that why is big enough, you will become unstoppable to the point to where you don't have anybody. You don't need anybody telling you what to do because your why is just going to be that very thing that pulls you every single day to realizing that it's the everyday activities, the sharing, the belief that you now begin to pour into other people, the opportunity that you have, the products, you're, you're becoming a product of the product, you're now showing the plan, you're talking to people, it will now start to attract because the energy that you give will always be the energy that you get. And so it really is all about process and understanding that we have the greatest opportunity of a lifetime here, Africa. And we're even more excited for you all because you are literally in the forefront of something. History, yes. You're making yes. history. Really is. You are in the midst of making history. You are the history that will change the trajectory of your entire country. Believe it. And, and we walk always say you guys, you, you guys get Every day. to be in the you guys get to be on the ground floor in the foundation. And I know we're out of time, right? You guys get to be in the foundational part of this, right? And this is what we discovered. Anytime that you can be a part of a foundational build, it means that you don't just get if you come in, you don't just get a, a window in the building. If you're a part of the foundation, you get to rise with the building yes. and get a penthouse view of everything once the building is erected. Yes. And we call that the wonders of residual income. And that's the part about this industry that we love. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So, let's so see. We, could, we could go yeah. on and on, yeah, right? We can, but we we can go all to, day, trust me. We want to definitely open it up. You know, if anyone has any questions of us on tonight, we are here to answer any questions that you all may have. And if not, then we will definitely turn it back over to blessing. But we just wanna again, just thank you all for such an amazing opportunity uh, to be able to share from our heart tonight with all of you, um, you know, a little bit about our story because there's so much, much more that we can really tell you on how this industry has really blessed us um, as a whole. But you just gotta know that it's your turn, not your time. Africa, it's your turn. Because when you make a decision to turn, you're, t you're moving on an axis. You see, time is endless. So never say it's my time. It's your turn. And make this thing move. All right, so anybody have any questions? Or, or blessing to return back blessing. to Thank you so much, Nathan. Um, uh, it's been an amazing evening. Golden nuggets gets right there. Um, the chat is on fire. So I'll start right there before I say any other thing. Let me start with the chat. I've got a couple of questions there. Um, the first question was from Yolandi when she was asking about the book and where they can get their hands on the book. Yeah, the book is on Amazon. I don't know if, if you guys can get it on can Amazon. You get it? Amazon. Is yes, we can. Oh, you can. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so the name of the book, <laughs> the name of the book is "How to Build a Fire in Your MLM Business: The The Spark, the Smoke, and the Fire." Okay. If you just put my name in there, that's probably easier. Um, so there's a 30 day planner there with it. But um, this book was was created um, solely to give the simple aspect of this industry without the complications. Okay. So if you read this book, it's not a it's not a tough read. If you read this book and you still have questions about this industry, then read this book again. OK, because everything in this book is exactly what Pam and I went through in order to actually start a foundation to build uh, an amazing business in this industry. Basic principles. Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nate. Thank you. Yolanda is still asking, um, 
you mentioned three steps. Um, for um, the first was take off, which is asking for the second and the third. So the, the second is separation, and the third is separation orbit. orbit. Awesome. All right. Um, and then there's separate another question separate. right here. Sorry, Pam. Oh no, I I just said you gotta separate in order to elevate. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, Coach Michelle wants to know, what are your steps to building teams globally? How have you succeeded in doing that? Right, absolutely. Well, you know what? The key to building glo globally is, number one, you have to really begin to understand the culture. And um, then you have to be able to put things into place that's really going to help to fuel that culture from the standpoint of understanding that there's a lot of sacrifice that has to be involved when it comes time to building globally, just simply because of the, the time difference that could be oh, happening, yeah. the culture, um, you know, just different things. But the key is having a system. Anytime that you have a system put in place as you're building globally, then that is where the success begins to happen because the system is gonna save yourself some time, energy, and money. So really and truly is just adopting that culture, getting to know the culture right. and understanding that there is a huge sacrifice that you have to be willing to do in order to really create the success, you know, globally in other countries. And just knowing that, um, you know, it's going to be, require that time that you're gonna to have to put into it. You're going to have to be able to spend more time with the individuals that are in those other uh, other countries helping them to grow so it means that you know like here in the us we had like like africa is just beginning to grow for us right so we know that there's some things that we have to put into place from from the standpoint of the the private gatherings because they can't plug into the team calls and things that, that we're doing here in the u.s because you guys go to bed you know when when we wake up when we're out working and vice versa you know and things of that nature so it really is just a understanding that there's sacrifice putting some systems and some things into place to really begin it to grow globally and just being consistent with it and understanding that it takes time and it really is about the process um, that will be the, the end all be all as things begin to grow. I don't know if you got anything else. You no, culture is the biggest part. Yeah. For me, it's understanding the culture. Right. Um, as Americans, you know, people make a mistake of thinking that our, we have the same culture as other countries and other countries have far better cultures than we do. This is my opinion. <laughs> Your culture right. is amazing. So you, once right. you learn that culture, um, I think it's you connecting with the people in that country. And I think that's the heart part of it, right? Connecting with people from a heart level. Yeah, so. that, that, that's definitely it. And you all have some amazing food over there in South Africa. We can't <laughs> wait to get back to get some of that food. <laughs> true, true. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nick, right? And I heard your comment about the gym, too. You can do it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I love it, you know. And and um, you know, the only thing that too I would add to Are there any more questions though? Yeah. Any more questions? Any, any more questions, blessing? Yes, there's there's one question here from Sarah. Um, what is your experience in introducing an event or what can you share that has helped you when planning to do that? Okay, what is your experience introducing an event? And what event. can you share? Okay, are you saying presenting 